when I notice a friend, I was like, oh my gosh, boys and girls, I have to stop friends. I just noticed something that made Miss May's teacher heart so happy, and it is going to make your first year heart so happy. Hey guys, it's Miss May. Welcome back to my channel. This is part of my classroom management series. I began the series last week with an introduction about building relationships with your students. If you have not seen that video, please check that out before you watch this video. There will be a link in the description box below or click the card up here and it will take you right to it. So let's get started. Classroom management is such a huge part in our schools and our classrooms all across the world. And it is very crucial that we have good classroom management so that we can prepare our students for the future so that our content can be taught and not be interrupted by too many behaviors. So my first tip today is all about procedures and routines. It is so crucial and so important that you have procedures in place and constantly doing that. Well, many of you are probably wondering, what do you mean by procedures? So what I mean by procedures is what is it that you want your students to do when something happens and you can't attend to it or when a problem arises, you gotta have things, solutions quickly for the students so they know what to do. You can teach a small group, you can confer with students, and so it's important that you have these procedures in place. Now, I will tell you every single summer, since my very first year of teaching, I take a day where I just make a list of all the procedures that I need in my classroom. You need a lot of them because procedures help for a smooth, running, flowy classroom and that's what you want. Sorry guys, if you can't tell, but my, I'm kind of losing my voice. But anyway, so I'm gonna give you some examples of some procedures. So one procedure um, many teachers have, okay, so an example of a procedure would be if kids, if, the, if they're working independently at their seats or wherever in the room and their pencil breaks, what do they do? So, you know, back in the day, kids would raise their hand, you would call on them, my pencil's broke, you go sharpen it for them, or they would sharpen it themselves. Well, that's a distraction. Nobody has time for that because if you're teaching a small group, you know, you know, it may be a while before you look up out into your classroom to see what's going on to be able to call on that student. So I have a procedure for pencils. So for example, here's my supply bin. Okay, I did a video on this. I'll put a link in the description box as well for this. But the procedure is if my kids are working and their pencil breaks, they know to put their broken pencil in the broken in the broken bin and then they come to the unbroken and they get a fresh one and they go to their seat. Simple. They're not asking Miss May anything. They're not asking a neighbor anything. They just get up and go do it. Another procedure would be if a student doesn't have a certain color crayon. Let's say, for instance, blue or purple or green at their in their pencil box. Then they go to the community supplies located in our classroom. And if they need a blue, they come and get a blue. I put blue crayons in here and blue markers. All in one place, they grab and go. Now, back in the day, I used to pour all the crayons in one bin and all the markers in another bin. Well, the problem with that is you get kids who want to stand there and act like they're looking for a color and they're wasting their time. So this way, it's very quick and simple and easy. Boom, they grab it, use it, bring it back. So that's what I mean by procedures. You got to teach those things to your students so that they know what to do. Um, there's just there's procedures on how you want your kids to come in to your classroom every single morning from the beginning of the year for a good solid strong month month and a half i teach these procedures constantly and anytime a student may not be doing something correctly we just we go back and revisit it when i say procedures that means anything from how they transition um into your classroom, how they leave to go home. I play music for almost every transition that I have. That's a procedure. When you, they, my students hear a certain song, 
they know we have a song for clean up find your learning spot clean up meet me in the movie area clean up um it's the end of the day there's i have different songs for everything there's a song for when they come in in the morning to get them up ready to go and happy um, i have songs that i play during reading time during math group time use music to transition there's so much good music on there and my students they love kids bop so definitely use different songs to transition um, different situations that those are just procedures that you teach your students and you have to be consistent you have to be consistent you can't do it one day and then not do it for two days and then oh do it again and then not do it for another day there's no way you're gonna have consistency with your students it's gonna be chaos and who in the world wants chaos in their classroom no nobody has time for that so I'm gonna teach you and well I'm gonna show you how I teach my students at the beginning of the year now you can do this anytime because sometimes we find procedures that we use or management styles that we use and they don't work for us and so you have to find that procedure that truly truly works for you and until you do you just keep keep trying keep trying keep trying but always when you start a new procedure or teach something new to them make sure you follow up with the anchor chart so I'm gonna show you how I teach my students. So here's my anchor chart and um, anchor what they're thinking on here so that you can refer back to it when you go to reteach it. They have a visual. So I love to make anchor charts, shout out to, I love to use Mr. Sketch markers because they smell good as you're creating them. But I always use Mr. Sketch for my mark, well not always, but I use Mr. Sketch most of the time. I'm just gonna teach you um, what I do. So it goes a little something like this. Boys and girls, I'm so excited to teach you this procedure that's gonna take place in our classroom this year. It's all about when you need to go to the bathroom or you need a drink of water. Now, as you know, I showed you where our water bottles go during the day in case you need to go and take a drink of water but sometimes we forget our water bottles so sometimes you may need to get up and you may need to go to the restroom and go get a drink of water so I'm going to teach you this procedure on how to use the restroom without raising your hand and asking Miss May Miss May has this jar here I have this jar here now this jar has a girl's pass and a boy's pass now, I'm going to teach you what you're going to do when you need to go to the restroom. You're not going to sit there if you have to use the restroom and raise your hands, okay? What you're going to do is, is you're going to get the pass, you're going to put it on your desk, you're going to walk out, you're going to come back in, and then you're going to put it back in the correct spot where it belongs, back in here. So, I'm Miss May's going to show you what it looks like and what it when you need to go to the restroom. Now, the only thing Miss May asks is that you do not go to the restroom when Miss May is teaching. If Miss May is teaching, I need you here to be listening because it's important that you're learning from Miss May. Now, if it's an emergency, Miss May totally understands. If it's an emergency, I understand. But most of the time, we really don't have a true emergency every single day. But sometimes we have an emergency. You give me that look, and here's the look. If you need to go to the restroom, here's the look, and it's an emergency. And Miss May's teaching. <gasps> Did you see Miss May? So I looked up. My eyes are big, and I'm shaking like this. That lets me know that you need to go to the restroom. You can't hold it. And I'm just going to nod like that so that you can go. I'm not teaching, you are free to go whenever you would like. So Miss May is gonna show you what it looks like and what it sounds like when you need to go to the restroom. Here we go. Now, I just showed you 
what it looks like and sounds like when you need to go to the restroom. Can anybody model what Miss May just did? Can anybody show me what I just did? Okay, show Miss May. So, guys, I'm getting out of character now. So what you do is you model it first. You model the procedure first, what you want it to look like and sound like. And then second, you have another kid model what you did. And then, so that's when I ask somebody if they want to, if they can model what I did. We watch them, they model, we watch them and look at them. Then I'll say, that was amazing. I absolutely loved how you did that. Thumbs up if you really, really loved how our first friend did that. So they do that. So then I'll go into, okay, boys and girls, I need somebody. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm asking somebody to do this, but I need somebody to model to Miss May and to all of our friends what it should it look like. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this, but can somebody model the not so great way to use that restroom pass? And so I model that, I, I model like, whew, cause guys, you gotta sell it to these kids. You have to sell it. So you choose on some, you choose someone to model the not so good way on how to do that. Then after that friend models that, they get silly, they laugh, you know, it's all good. Then you have somebody model again the correct way. And then you all watch them. They come back and then I'll say, oh my gosh, let's give all of our actors a bravo. Yay. Yay! So then after that, you get to the anchor chart. And what you ask the kiddos, you'll say, okay, boys and girls, let's talk about, you know, what did it look like when we saw Miss May? And then, you know, you could say whoever, student A, student B, or student A, student C, what did it look like when we all went to the restroom? Show me what that, tell me what that looks like. Put your thinking caps on, lock it, and then always give them, you know, about 30 seconds to just think. And then you start calling on people and they'll start telling you, oh, I noticed they walked quietly. They didn't disrupt friends. They, they didn't run. There wasn't any running. They were walking. They were, you know, they, you want to put the positives that they see. They were walking. Um, they were smiling. They, they moved quickly. You know, so you just model whatever they come up with that's positive. You put that here as they're talking to you. Then here you ask them, well, friends, what did it sound like when they were going to the restroom? And they'll tell you they were quiet. You know what I mean? So you just anchor their thinking here. And then this is your chart that you refer to. You're done teaching that, you know, you just wrap up with and remind them. So boys and girls, don't forget when you need to use the restroom, you make sure you grab that pass and you put it on your table and then you go. And then I explain to them why it's so important that they put it on their table. Because we may have a fire drill and we may need to leave the building quickly. I need to know where you are at. Because it's so easy to just quickly glance at the tables and see where a pass is at. I immediate looking, I can tell who's gone. So that's how you model a procedure. During the day, you know, during the day, as I, you know, as, after I have modeled this, I'll stop in the middle of my small group and kids are working. I make it a point to say, when I notice a friend, I'll say, oh my gosh, boys and girls, I have to stop friends. I just noticed something that made Miss May's teacher heart so happy and it is going to make your firsty heart so happy. Can I tell you what I noticed? And of course they'll say, yeah. I say, oh my gosh, I noticed how Chloe got up she needs to go to the restroom. She didn't raise her hand. She went and got that pass. She walked to her table. She placed it down. She went to the restroom quietly. She didn't run. She didn't talk. She came back. She walked in nicely, grabbed the pass, and she put it back, and she went right back to work. And guess what? It didn't interrupt my teaching. It didn't interrupt your learning. Oh, can we give her a clap, my friends? And then we all clap. Okay, so you do that quite often when you notice that because what kid does not want to be doted on it? Oh my gosh, who doesn't want that? Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I do if I notice a kid didn't do the right thing. So then I don't do it in the middle of class. I wait until I play my music. 
the cleanup song comes on for them to come to their learning spot. And I'll sit and I'll say, guys, Miss May's teacher heart is sad right now. And they'll be like, why, Miss May? Well, someone in our class. And friends, never call out a kid's name who did it. Never, ever, ever. Don't insult children. Please don't. I don't care how old they are. But anyway, I'll say, friends, I noticed that a friend went to the restroom and they got the pass, but they were running. I saw them run to the restroom. And then when they came back, I saw them grab the pass and as they were taking it back, they were interrupting somebody's learning. Friends, my heart is super sad. And then I'll say, can anybody model for us what it should look like and sound like when we need to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water? Can anybody model that for me and make Miss May's heart happy again? And then they'll model somebody and model it. Hopefully it's the kiddo that made the mistake. And I'll say, I'll call on that kiddo to say, oh, please model it. Oh my gosh, amazing. So friends, I hope this helped you with modeling how to teach these procedures i don't i teach these procedures at the beginning of the year right before christmas break i teach them when we come back from break i teach them when, teach it to them when we come back from the um spring break and during those times it's a pretty quick reminder you know what i mean these different routines um and then i just ask them periodically friends can anybody tell me <laughs> i totally forgot my pencil's broke and I'm working. What am I supposed to do? And they will tell you. And then you model what they tell you. Just model, 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 model what you want. And be consistent. And just keep it in your routine. And you should be okay. So think about every single procedure that you can think of. And the reason why I like that bathroom procedure is because I'm not a fan of you know, you get three tickets in the morning and three tickets in the afternoon to use the restroom or three tickets all day. Who has time to be keeping track of tickets to go use the, to go pee? Who has time for that? It's like my principal saying, Miss May, you have two tickets to use the restroom. I mean, we already hold it as long as we can as it is. And then to tell me I only have two tickets? Really? Like, kids have problems, you know? They have, you know, they have problems. So if they need to go to the restroom, I let them use the restroom. Now I'm going to be honest, the restroom thing, they're going to try to abuse it a little bit at the beginning because it's new. You know, they think it's cool that they, they don't have to ask the teacher. They just go and do their thing. I want them to know that one, I trust them. Two, I want them to be comfortable. And three, I want them to be independent. You know, if I'm sitting in a small group, and a kiddo is sitting there with their hand raised to go to the restroom, it could be two minutes before I look up because I'm so engaged into my group. This kid could easily pee on themselves. I don't want that. I don't want a mom or daddy calling me or grandma saying, Miss May, so-and-so had an accident. Um, why? I, I, don't want, I don't want that. I want my parents happy. I want myself happy. And I want my firsties happy. So definitely think about your procedures and if they're appropriate, if you feel like they're appropriate. There are so many ideas out there, so many wonderful teachers out there with ideas. Research it, but I highly suggest you think about, especially in the summertime and you're starting the new year, I, I dedicate a day to just making a list of all my procedures from passing out papers, from getting um, mail out of their mailbox whatever I can think of you know and always always use music to transition that will be your whew, to me that's what keeps part of this classroom so daggone happy all right my love so don't forget procedures 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 have a procedure for everything everything that you could think of and um, you got to sell it to them guys if you don't sell it to them they're not gonna buy it just think about it. If I just said, yeah, I saw somebody, you know, um, didn't do the right thing, man. Or, yeah, you need to get your pencil. Pencil breaks. Throw it in the broken. Get a new one. All right. That's it. All right. So, you know, I'm not saying you have to be, but you have to sell it. You have to sell it to these kiddos or they're not going to buy into it.
And trust me, when they don't do it the right way, especially after you've you've sold it to them and you've praised so many your happiness, when someone doesn't do it right, they're going to feel so bad. So bad. All right, loves. Until next time, I will see you next Saturday again with another tip. As always, hugs and blessings to you. Love you guys. Bye.